And this is basically being accepted by the U.S. even as they oppose it. I mean, look at what's taking place in Jabalia. Look at these scenes. This is uh, an academic named Nicola Perugini. Jabalia, Palestinian men separated from women and children and transferred to torture camps by Israeli military as part of the ethnic cleansing of Gaza. These are just packs of men. They're, they, you know, they're so, it's told, Israelis are told these are Hamas fighters. They're just any man. It's any man between 18 and 50. Sometimes they're children and they're even younger. And they're all going to be brutally tortured. Then we can see scenes of women and children and anyone else, the elderly, being driven out to who knows where, south to Gaza City, where the population is under heavy bombing. And throughout October, no aid has been allowed in. They're basically being told to starve or surrender, and that's the essence of the general's plan. And then you got Tony Blinken. I mean, uh, here, well, here's uh, the Israeli human rights group, Bet Selim, declaring it openly just in case no one believes what's happening there. The world must stop the ethnic cleansing of northern Gaza. The magnitude of crimes Israel is currently committing in the northern Gaza is in its campaign to empty it of however many residents are left is impossible to describe, not just because hundreds of thousands of people are enduring starvation disease without access to medical care and incessant bombardments and gunfire defies comprehension, but because Israel has cut them off from the world. And as we've seen, we saw earlier, Israel is tr uh, announcing its plan to kill the only international journalists who are there to cut the world off from northern Gaza. So in the midst of this crime, Tony Blinken arrives for his 11th visit. 11 visits and he's accomplished what? Maybe what he always planned to accomplish, but he says that he's working tirelessly for a ceasefire. This is John Hudson from the Washington Post who follows Blinken. Blinken questioned Netanyahu about a plan backed by some Israeli officials to gain full control of northern Gaza by starving out or killing Palestinians currently there. And uh, U.S. officials insisted, this is from the report, that Netanyahu should go to greater length to say publicly that, there is, that they are not following the general's plan. The Israelis declined to make such a commitment. Then today, Blinken was asked about this again. He's in Qatar, so he's facing a little bit more critical questioning there. And he's asked about the general's plan again. And this is what he had to say. In the coming days. Uh, with regard to the, uh, the so-called general's plan uh, in the north, let me just say again, first, the United States fully and fundamentally rejects it. Uh, second, as I told you the other day, uh, the government of Israel uh, says that it is not the policy uh, of Israel and also rejects the plan. Uh, we reject any effort um, to create a siege, to, uh, to, to starve people, to um, hive off northern Gaza from the rest of Gaza. Uh, we've been very clear about that. Uh, we'll remain very clear about that. So how, is it, how are they clear about that? He's covering up for Israel as he's always done. And maybe he's forgetting he recently wrote Israel a letter, which he was forced to do because the siege was just so barbaric, complaining that Israel is blocking humanitarian aid into the north and giving Israel a 30-day deadline to uh, take steps to reduce that and, of course, threatening consequences that will never come. So he's even acknowledged that Israel is blocking aid. He knows there's a siege. That reporting there for the Washington Post newly confirms it. Uh, and even though the Israeli government told him that they're not going to make a public statement disavowing the general's plan, there he is. They're going up in the front of the public and doing that on Israel's behalf because Israel won't do it. So he's taken it upon himself to be an Israeli government spokesperson. Uh, you know, putting forward a propaganda line that even they don't they don't want to put forward because they know it's not true. And this, I mean, this is what he's doing to be clear about the about 
the opposition to what Israel's doing in northern Gaza, establishing an air bridge. The data shows the evidence unearthed by Al Jazeera uses open source flight data to show the scale of American and British involvement in Israel's war on Gaza and now Lebanon. The data shows more than 6,000 military flights in a year, including hundreds of transport missions ferrying arms to Israel. Israel flew only 20% of the 1,600 reconnaissance flights recorded, whereas the UK accounted for nearly half, using its Shadow R1 surveillance aircraft, which provided intelligence on ground movements in Gaza. The UK sent Israel targeting data amassed during 645 flights. The report reveals the extent of the weapons air bridge built for Israel. More than 1,200 military cargo flights made up the airlift over a year. So you get the point. It's just constant unprecedented arms deliveries on auto pay to Israel to make it possible to carry out the ethnic cleansing campaign that Blinken claims he opposes. And the plans are all there. I mean, there's plans on Benjamin Netanyahu's website to for, for the post-war post plan. Blinken has said, we need to get to the post-war plan. What they mean is the complete pacification of Gaza as the cradle of resistance and the transformation, as you said, of Gaza into a kind of uh, a tribal administered UAE, Saudi, US, Israeli run dictatorship where anyone who refuses to surrender their biometric data is shot on site and no form of resistance, including protest, is permitted as the great, the new Middle East that Blinken is and his team support along with Jared Kushner and his team comes into being in their fantasy world. And Blinken, I assume when he goes back to the private sector, will make lots of money off that. That Al Jazeera clip you just played of the military bridge uh, provided by the US and UK to Israel. And think about what it's for. This is not for a conventional war between Israel and another army. For the last year, it's mostly between Israel and a defenseless death camp where the only fighting Israel sees is, you know, when it goes on the ground. But most of it has been Israel just bombing from afar. And so the U.S. and U.K. have been instrumental in resupplying Israel as, just, as it just bombards a caged population of more than 2 million people. I can't think of a precedent in recent history where there's been so much military effort and weaponry put into uh, bombarding and destroying such a defenseless target uh, you know it, it's hard to think over such a prolonged period of time too and yes some of it is also to fight hezbollah and lebanon but that's only really amped up recently so what we're seeing there in that video from al jazeera is mostly just a rearming effort an intelligence effort to destroy a defenseless death camp where more than two million people are trapped and can't escape because and the presence the sheer presence of palestinians and lebanese in southern lebanon represents resistance. Yes. And so they're, they're, they're simply targeting the entire population. It's gone beyond the Dahia doctrine. Yeah. I mean, we could just call it the Gaza doctrine. Yeah. And I think um, since you know time is running out for me here, I, I want to move on to Lebanon. And that, okay, before we do, uh, let me just say, as we're, as we're broadcasting, there's more news of Israeli massacres in the north, Jabalia refugee camp, uh, Mossab Abu Toha, the, the poet from Gaza, he's reporting that Israel's hit 13 houses in one neighborhood, killing more than 150 people. That's what he's saying. So this is, you know, it's just, it goes on and on. And early, you know, earlier there was a strike on a school with a number of people killed. Israel striking a school in Gaza. People are sheltering. So this is just massacre after massacre. Yeah. Uh, also earlier today, a massacre at the Magazi Sports Stadium in the Magazi refugee camp. 13 children killed. Israel still allowed to be a member of FIFA while it bombs people sheltering in a soccer stadium after killing something like 50 um, athletes in Gaza, professional athletes. <laughs>